30 years ago when I wrote The Belarus Secret, uh, the Justice Department and other agencies censored the heck out of it. And now, 30 years later, um, you know, I'm free to write about it. And they've, they've sort of walked into their own trap. They wouldn't have censored this stuff out of my book 30 years ago unless it was true. And now they can't deny it. It's funny, my book came out on Veterans Day in November, and three days later the Justice Department leaked a 600-page report to the New York Times, um, you know, apologizing, justifying uh, their efforts, and admitting that, in fact, yeah, the U.S. government, okay, did recruit some Nazis, and we might have lied about some stuff to the courts. But they... The idea was that before a single review could be written about my book, they wanted to get their story out and plead to the misdemeanor because they knew I was going to charge them with the felony. Um, there are people in the Justice Department who belong in prison. They lied to Congress. They orchestrated one fraud after another. And this isn't just you know one little episode. This is something that goes back to the 1920s. The Justice Department was protecting those great American families who funded Hitler. Teddy Roosevelt banned monopolies, trusts, and cartels in America. The Webb Pomeranian Act of 1918 allowed American corporations, the, the robber barons of Wall Street, to set up monopolies, trusts, and cartels overseas. So these crooked companies bought three countries. Um, they funded the infant Nazi party of Germany, the infant Bolshevik party of Russia, and what became the House of Saud. Basically, they funded three terrorist groups to take control of three countries that would allow them to set up their monopolies, trusts, and cartels. This is both Republicans and Democrats. On the Democratic side, everybody knows about Joe Kennedy, but they don't know that Joe Kennedy bought his Nazi stock from Prescott Bush. Okay? Prescott Bush's father-in-law, Herbert Walker, was the evil genius that put this stuff together. The Harrimans with a great Democratic family. They funded the Bolsheviks, and they put together a deal with Walker, the Rockefellers, uh, the Bushes, to set up joint operations that would have, uh, uh, you know, because of the money they pumped in the early Bolshevik party, they had sort of a monopoly of Russian raw material exports. And because of the money that uh, the Bushes, the Walkers, the Rockefellers, the DuPonts had pumped into Germany, they had a monopoly on the German high-tech patent stuff. So they wanted to build an industrial park. Because of the difference in the rail lines, it had to be you know, in eastern Poland near the Russian border because the rail gauges were different. And uh, the idea was to bring in Russian raw material by rail and then by barge. So they actually had dug the canals to the industrial park. And then the Germans would build... A, a, a big factory to extract additives from coal, things that could be used for Russian aviation fuel additives. Now, so they f had a, have a place near a big coal mine that was the province of Silesia on the Vistula River where the canals could be dug and near the Russian border. So they picked the little Polish village of Auschwitz. And, yep, um, America's finest families helped work with the Russians to build Auschwitz as a profit center. People like Harriman claim that, you know, oh, no, we got out of it as soon as the war began. Not true. Not true. Um, Harriman filed proxy statements to keep control of the company during the war. The Silesian American Coal Company was run by none other than Prescott Bush, the father of the 41st president and grandfather of, of 43. Um, these were despicable people. They made a profit on both sides of World War II. 